So in this video, we're going to cover chapter five in the book, Python for Beginners. If you haven't already bought the book, please do so. You can go to Amazon, buy the book. That will help you in this video series. Uh, if you haven't bought the book and you just want to follow along in the video series, that's fine. You can do that. What I'd prefer for you to do is to just subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can join our Patreon. You can become a member or you can just buy us a coffee if you would like. I appreciate your support. It helps me to continue to create these books and videos and all of the information that we're sharing. So chapter five. If you've got this far well done, you've already learned a whole lot of Python. All the basics are coming together. And chapter five is going to go through functions. Now, in this chapter, the, we're going to explore the concept of functions and how they allow you to break your code into smaller reusable pieces, making it easier to manage, debug, and improve the readability of your programs. Functions also help you organize your code logically and reduce repetition. They're also very good for debugging to help you to understand what's going wrong because you can get the function to tell you what it thinks you gave it, etc. So we're going to cover defining functions, how you create your own functions, calling functions, how you use functions to perform tasks, which you've already done. As I mentioned in the last chapter, um, you've already used input, which is a function. You've already used int, which is a function, print, which is a function. There are lots of functions that you're using without realizing you're using them. And then we're going to talk about parameters and arguments and passing information to functions and returning values from functions, getting results back from your function. So let's take a look at it and see what we can do. The first thing here um, to understand is by the end of this chapter, you're going to be able to create and use functions to write cleaner and more efficient code. And in section one, we're going to define a function. So what is a function? Well, functions are blocks of code that are designed to do one specific task. They allow you to group related code together so you can run it by simply calling the function. To define a function in Python, use the, the def keyword, D-E-F keyword, followed by the function name and parentheses. So I'm going to just show you that on the screen here. I'm just going to get rid of this from chapter four. I'm going to go into chapter five. So we're going to def. And then our function name can be anything we want it to be. So I can call it starlight if I want. Now, what I would do is I would name your functions something that makes sense so that you know what you're trying to do. For instance, the print function is called print because it prints stuff. So it's good to name your functions uh, for the function that they're carrying out. Okay. Then once you've done that, remember you have a colon at the end of that definition. Once you've done that, everything under here is going to be carried out. So if we say print and hello world, this is a function. When we run this function, it would simply print that. If I go below here and I type out a very short program, I can just say starlight and close those and that's how you call that starlight function so we're literally going to call it by just typing its name with the braces and then if i run that i'm going to run that program and it just prints out hello world this is a function now what did it do when it came into this program the first thing python did is it saw the definition for starlight and it remembered that it says print hello world. Then the first thing we did in our program was to call starlight. So it went up here, it said starlight, printed that. That's all it does. It's, it's that simple. Now in the book, you have a similar example. It's greet. And it just says, hello, welcome to Python. So when you call a function, the code inside the function is executed. And whatever you've put in there will be executed. So in, in this second section, we're going to understand what about parameters and arguments. What if I want the, the function to do something different? So um, what are parameters and arguments? So functions can accept parameters, also called arguments, which allow you to pass information into the function. 
When defining a function, you specify the parameters inside the parentheses. And when calling the function, you pass the actual values, the arguments for those parameters. So the way that works is if we go up to our starlight function, and I'm just going to change it a little bit. I'm going to parameter one. I'm going to say name. I'm going to use lowercase. And parameter two, I'm going to say age. And now when I call this function, I have to give it a name and an age. So I'm going to give it Ian. And I'm going to give it 21. Yeah, I wish. And so you can call that function, passing it that name and that age. Let me do this now with my print statement. I'm going to make that formatted and I'm going to say, Instead of hello world, I'm going to say hello name. And I'm going to say your age is. And I'm going to, again, curly braces when you included in that in your formatted print statement. So your age is. And then I'm going to say, and this is a function. So the example in the book is slightly different to that, but it's basically the same. So I'm going to run that one. And right away, you can see it says, hello, Ian, your age is 21, and this is a function. So let's go through what it actually did here. So we have our definition of our function called starlight, and we expect a name and an age. Then once we get those, we are going to print hello name so then the actual name that we received here and we're going to say your age is and the actual age that we received here and this is a function then when the program starts we're going to go call that function starlight pass it that my name is ian pass it my age is 21 and it'll run and it will execute that what does return in a value mean what does it mean when a function returns a value so the return keyword this allows the function to output a result which can then be used in other parts of your program so if you wanted it instead of printing that out to the screen you wanted it just to send back that whole sentence you don't want it to actually print it out but you want it to give it back to you you can say return and then give that sentence so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the the demonstration from the book and it's a function that calculates the square of a number and returns the result. This one's pretty straightforward, but I'm gonna walk you through it. So my function is gonna be called square and it's gonna expect number. And I need a colon at the end of that because we're defining the function. And all it's gonna do is it's gonna return number times itself. So number times number. And notice we say return and then number times number. So it's going to return the square of that number. And then when we call the function, we're just going to say our result is equal to, and I'm going to square five, and then I'm just going to print my result. So again, before we run it, let's just go through it and make sure that we understand it. So first we're creating a function called square, and square is expecting to receive a number from us. Then it's going to return the number times number so it's the number times itself and what we're doing when we call that function we're actually assigning result the variable result the value of whatever square five produces and then we're going to print that result so let's go ahead and we'll just run that one and as you would expect it prints 25. so now we have a simple function that will give us a square of a number and I could call that many times. So I can say here, I'm going to do the second one. I'll say result equals square seven. And I'm just going to say print result. And now when we run it, what would you expect to happen? I'm going to run it, let you see. And as you expected, we get our square of five, which is 25. And we print it there. And then we get our square of seven, which is 49. And we print it there. So we can square any number with this because whatever number we send, 
is the number we're going to get square from. So you could use your input function here to put in a number and get the square of that number. So it would be a very simple square calculator. Um, so the square function returns the result of a multiplying the number by itself and the result stored in a, in a variable called result and then printed. It's a very simple way of doing it. So you can combine functions as we saw in chapter four when we used the int. We put int and then we had the input inside the int and it combined those functions. So functions are powerful tools when combined with other programming concepts. And let's use functions in a program that asks for a user's name and age and then tells them how old they'll be in 10 years time. So it's a fairly straightforward one, but it's a little bit of typing. So I'm going to do the copy paste thing here again. OK, so here is the code and I'm going to walk you through it once we've run it. I'm just going to run it first so you can see what it does. It might make more sense that way. So I'm going to run it and it says, what is your name? So I'm going to put my name in. How old am I? Of course, I'm 21. Hello, Ian. In 10 years, you'll be 31. Hmm. Interesting. So how does that work? What we did in this program is we defined a function called future age and it expected a parameter called current age. Once it gets that current age, it's going to return the current age plus 10. In the next function, we create a function that, that is to get the user information and call the future age function. So in that one, we define get user info. And then it doesn't require any parameters. The first thing it does is it uses the input function. So it says name and it assigns name the value of whatever that input is. So what is your name? And you put in your name. That's where I typed in Ian. And then the age and it assigns so age is a variable and it assigns that the, the int of the input. So remember, we did this in chapter four, too. So the input is how old are you? Once it gets that number, it's going to convert it to an integer. Then that means we can do math on it. If we don't do that, what's going to happen when we get the future age function and we try and add 10 to it, it will be a string and we'll say plus 10. I'll say you can't do that. Then we say we assign future equals future age and age. So we're calling the future age function and we're passing it the age that we just got from the user. And it goes up there. And it returns the age plus 10. Now notice when I said future age and I passed it a variable of age. When it receives it into that future age function, the parameter is called current underscore age. So all it's done is it's taken whatever's in age and it's put it into current age. And then it's returned current age plus 10. And then finally in that function, it prints the hello and it has the curly braces around name. So we're using the format statement in the print. So we print F outside the double quotes, then hello, my name. So it's going to print that in 10 years, you will be future because that's what we calculated it with years old. And then finally, the last bit in the program is just calling the get user info function. So the first thing the program does is call the get user info function doesn't pass any parameters. The get user info function asks the user for input. Then the get user info function calls the future age function. And then finally, the get user info function returns that sentence. So why don't you try this? Write a function that takes a number and returns whether it's even or odd. Now, remember the modulus thing that we did before. Um, that was how you decide whether it's even if you do a modulus two and the result is zero. It's going to be an even number. Just to give you a hint. Go ahead and do that and see if you can make that make sense. I'd love to see your your solution. And if you have any struggles, just let me know and I'll provide you with a solution. Or you can let me know what your solution looks like.
Now modify the program to allow the user to enter their favorite color and print a message using both their name and color. So finally, in this chapter, you learned how to define a function and create reusable blocks of code. You learned what parameters and arguments are and how to pass function uh, pass information to functions you learned what the return is and how to return values getting a result from a function and then you learned about combining functions how you can use them multiple functions together for more complex programs so what i recommend when you create functions try and keep the output simple try and keep the function simple and just use multiple functions there's no limit on the number of functions, no practical limit on the number of functions you can use. And so you can create functions to do all of the small tasks and then bring them all together by calling each function. So with this knowledge, you can now start writing more modular and organized programs. The idea with this course is we're going to continue to use the things that we've learned earlier on, and we're going to continue to push the envelope and learn more as we go. If you've already read the book, you know exactly where we're going and it's easy for you to keep up. These videos are just meant to augment the book, allow you to get a little more insight and to give you a forum in which you can ask questions and find answers. If you're enjoying the course and you've made it here to chapter five, I appreciate that. Please give us a thumbs up for the, the video. Share it with anybody that you can that you think should be looking at it. Um, the problem with the, with YouTube is if you don't get many views on a video, it won't get out there. So if you can help me with that, that would be great. You can always join our channel. There's a lot of other things on the channel. The Adventures in Creation is uh, basically anything that I create, anything that I like to create or make or do, I put on the channel. I'm heavily focused on free care because a lot of people want to know about that. But I do, I 3D print and create things all the time i'm an avid woodworker and i also have a laser cutter that i do a lot of stuff with i enjoy programming always have and so i'm just bringing all the things together so that you guys can benefit from them now if you would like to just buy us a coffee you can do that on coffee.com or if you're interested in just giving us a super thanks you can do that Please go ahead, if you haven't already done so, and buy the book. You can get that on Amazon, and that will allow us to uh, continue to create more books and, and more chapters of videos. Thanks, and I look forward to making the next one.